Hello, my name is Adam Smith, and I wanted to show you this because I'm excited personally for what I'm going to be able to use this for in the future as I merge this into a tabletop game that I truly, truly love to this day. And this product right here comes from Loki Battle Mats. They have been on Kickstarter before multiple times, but recently a Kickstarter has ended a little bit ago for the Wilderness. And I'll put a link to it down below because they are taking late backers still, as well as they have their own shop with exactly things that you're seeing here on the screen already available. So everything you're about to see in this video is already out there in their store. You can pick it up if you find interest in it. The purpose of this video is just to show you because of my own personal excitement how cool I think these things really are and how I plan on using them. Now just before I explain what I plan on doing in order to use these with a tabletop game that I truly love, I want to point out a number of other things you can pick up to go onto these mats. Now you haven't actually seen any of them just yet, but you'll begin to understand how this thing works a little bit better if you see these. And it will actually explain how they work right on the front of them. And they are add-on scenery for RPG battle maps. So that's these books that you're seeing right here. So as you go through these books, and this is a smaller version of this, so I'll just flip it open to the first page so you can see it as an example, this one being completely blank, but here we go. We have a location across two different places, and what you can do is with this pack, for example, this one is going to give you some dungeon decorations, so it doesn't necessarily match this one right here perfectly, but there are a number of other ones like War and Siege or Town Trimmings or just Magic Effects. Basically, these are packs that allow you to use reusable static clings, which allow you to place them on laminated surfaces just like this wherever you want, and then take them off when you don't want them there anymore. This allows for a lot of customization without anything being permanent. Something else that I absolutely love about this is the fact they're not stickers. So they're not like a typical sticker where you're going to pull them off, stick them somewhere, be able to move them around for a little while until they get all dusty, dirty, and their stickiness loses its grip, and then all of a sudden you need to replace them. These are static clings that are going to stick to any laminated surface, so you're safe to use these over and over and over again. Now just before I go ahead and show you each and every page of these booklets, as well as all the static clings that we have here, I want to talk about the game that popped right into my head the second that I saw this, and that game is Shadows of Brimstone. Now, if you pick up the game from retail and play it as it is, it'll have you going into mines in a western world with an HP Lovecraft vibe in terms of the monsters you're going to be facing, and that's typically the main driver of Shadows of Brimstone. You're in the mines all the time, but it's a western world. However, there is a fantastic fantastic unofficial fan-made variant called Hexcrawl. It's one I've been playing for years and absolutely love it. It is probably the best and most in-depth fan-made variant that I've ever seen. It is gigantic in terms of its scale and what's really cool about it is it starts to flush out the world and the traveling between mines and the different western towns that you can visit. So essentially the game gives you a rule set but does doesn't give you any of the tiles or any of these outdoor locations for you to actually put your miniatures on in order to have combat outside of the mine. So if you have something like this, that solves that problem. Now in the past, what I did years ago is I laminated and printed on my own a bunch of fan-made tiles, which look okay, but they are definitely dated in comparison to this. 
And I've got a lot to say about the ones that I made myself and I just went to Staples, had them laminated and printed versus what you're seeing here on the tabletop. I'm gonna show you comparisons between the two ones that I created versus the ones that are here. And maybe that will even help you determine in your mind based on whatever games you're playing or RPGs you're interested in as to whether or not this is a good option versus potentially creating these things yourself. One of the best things about this is everything's bound and kept together nice and neatly but it's not just the ability to have these locations easily accessed inside of a book it's really about the fact that you've got these amazing different clings that you can attach to every single tile in any orientation you want and that if you do on your own is going to be quite expensive so let's go ahead and kick things off by taking a look at the little book of battle mats towns and taverns edition Next, let's take a look at the Towns and Taverns Books of Battle Mats. There are two of these books inside of this slip cover. We'll look at each of them.
All right, so now you've seen all the different scenery options that you have inside of these battle maps. But what if you start merging the books together side by side? Well, you open up even more options. Remember, these are binded books, so you can fold them over right here and just use one quadrant, or you can open the book up to use two, or you can pair it up with a different book in order to join them to open up a bigger scene. And you get customization on that as much as you want in terms of how you orientate these different books, as well as which pages you're using, you can set up some pretty cool situations. Now for me, playing Shadows of Brimstone with that unofficial hex crawl variant, there's times where you're going to find things when you're out in the wilderness and you're just wandering around the world map. So for instance, we've wandered into a town, it appears, and this could be that town. Now what excites me about this is the fact that it's a book Meaning, when I use these Klingon static-like stickers, and I don't want to use the word stickers, but these reusable static Klings is a better way to say it, I can set up a map, and then, if I didn't finish my session, I can literally close this book and put it on the shelf. That's it. That's all the storage that's required. That's all the effort that's required. There's no needing of storage for miniatures and all kinds of fancy stuff laying out everywhere. Of course, you put 3D elements all over maps like this. It's a lot more work to put them away and then bring them out later. If it's in a book and you can close it and open it, it's just simple. And if you have the little book as well as these larger ones for the particular theme that you're picking, you can definitely use them all together. So for instance, I flip to a page here where we have a boat which works perfectly with this dock-like area here on the side. And it looks like we now have a ship that's actually a part of the scene as well. It just allows for so much ease of customization without a lot of effort. Now that we've seen all the books, how about we check out these add-on scenery elements? I'm sure you guys want to see all the different options you have in terms of decorating each of these books with whatever scenery you want in terms of theme. We've got dungeon decorations here, which may not be appropriate for the current one we've got set up. We've also got magic effects. We have town trimmings. This one could certainly be used here. We absolutely can find some things. So I'll be pulling some stuff from this, like a blacksmith's table, a transport. We got some shops, rooftops for buildings. So that's the thing too, if you don't plan to go into a particular building or you consider a building locked, put a rooftop on it. Next up after that, we've got the add-on scenery for RPG battle maps. This is a war and siege one, so this one could also mix with this as well. We could easily have a tent over here in this grassy field or barricades or walls set up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out every single sheet that comes in these add-on packs. you guys have now seen every single sheet that comes in those add-on scenery packs and you'll notice there's something missing for this one right here. I've already gone ahead and taken off a tent. So you can see right here this is what it looks like. You basically have clear sides all the way around it so that when it gets applied you'll still have artwork coming through which makes it really blend in. So if I wanted to go ahead and place a tent right here I would just apply it like this. And now it's taking up exactly the spaces that I want it to take up and nothing else. 
And then when you're all done with it and you need to put it back, you no longer want it in that position, or you just want to reorientate it somewhere else, you just use your fingernail to lift one edge just like this and just catch it and pull it right off. And just like that, you can go ahead and reapply it anywhere else. You can have the tin sitting over here, or you can say, I'm done with it. I don't really want to use it any further. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it back on the sheet for future use. And at this point, you don't even really need it to be in the exact position you pulled it off in anyway, because it'll just stick straight to the sheet. I think one of the things that I love about these so much, and I've mentioned this already, is the fact that when they get stuck into a scene, they are just transparent on all the edges. So there is no overlap. You're not losing Using any art and they just look like they fit in whatever scene you're dropping them in on. Now of course if you start dropping dungeon type clings to certain tiles like these ones it may not look right but if you actually match them up for the ones that they're supposed to be with theme wise they look so so good. It becomes quite addicting really fast to just change up a scene even just with one change can make a dramatic impact on the feeling of what's going on in that scene. You know there might be an area of a building for instance that you don't want people to go into anymore so you're just going to go ahead and place a roof over top of it and now that place is locked up and not accessible or you just want to drop a well in an open field to allow water to be gathered it's as easy as that and then when you actually want to remove something you simply rub your nail along the edge lift up and put it back on its sheet. The final thing I want to touch on is what I alluded to at the beginning of the video, and that was I was using tiles that I had printed out from a fan uh, for Shadows of Brimstone, and this is what I've been using up to this point. Uh, the quality of these ones are good, but they're not great. They come nowhere in comparison to these books right here, especially when used with all these reusable static clings. It just makes these things elevate to another level, plus the fact they're all bound, coiled, and can be easily closed and sorted and put away. These things are all loose and they just go everywhere, but basically they're not that bad. The, uh, the printing quality of them is a couple steps down from what's going on in the books, but they're serviceable. So I might hold on to them just to see if I can make any use of them uh, as time goes on, but overall, these things can probably go at this point as I found a replacement that does all this so much better. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up this look at the Towns and Taverns set with the Book of Battle Mats Volumes 1, 2, as well as the Little Book of Battle Mats and some add-on scenery. I'll have links to the store where you can check this out if you're interested, as well as the latest Kickstarter where you can not only pick up products that were inside that Kickstarter, but also previously released content as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below. Did anything about this video pique your interest or did you think of a different game where you could potentially use this scenery or are you an individual that plays solo RPGs? This might be right up your alley. Looking forward to seeing the discussion in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and as always keep on rolling solo.